Good morning, everybody. This is Diggs. It's another beautiful day out here in the Pacific Northwest. Today, we're going to be talking about the January 19th update that hit Seven Nights 2. We're also going to be talking about the new unit, Aquila. Let's go ahead and dig in. <laughs> This was a huge update and probably the biggest thing going on right now is the 77th festival to celebrate the 77th day for the actual Seven Nights 2 game. Now, this is a festival that's going to unlock missions every day. I'm not sure if these missions are going to stay open or if you're only going to get one day to complete them. I'm kind of I'm kind of panicking doing them for the day one right now. Uh, I might suggest you do the same just in case. Wait for that unfortunate soul in your guild uh, to miss one and find out if you can miss one. Uh, but if you do get all the stars, which I assume you'll have to do all of the missions, uh, you do get a legendary hero selection ticket, which is very exciting. Uh, it's not a Lego Plus, but still being able to select a legendary hero is always great. The missions also offer really good rewards uh, you see we have celestial tower tickets we have soulstone quarry entry tickets universal books uh we have you know just tons of stuff that are going to be really great you can get two legendary gigantus weapons you can get a legendary gigantus equipment selection ticket and of course three of the coveted legendary plus pull tickets so lots going on here uh but even more is going on uh throughout pretty much everything uh let's take a second though and talk about aquila who uh has kind of been a universal letdown i would say uh not in the sense that you know people were hyped for her and she's just you know kind of letting people down but she's not really a hyped unit the updates that are kind of big this time are the guild battle or the guild raid battle updates and the uh you know 77 event aquila released and aquila is one of those units who you know she's not amazing she's not going to change the world she's not going to do something that you're not expecting but she's cool and she might be one of those unsuspecting units where maybe one day you need her uh maybe you know when you pull her and you she's kind of sitting in there and you're like man i need another support or something you throw her in right she's not she's not the star studded you know seven knights two unit but she's not terrible she's actually very unique as well uh, so she's a support unit she's designed for arena uh, her ultimate is going to deal 2400 percent of attack damage to the target um it's also going to recover 72 percent of max hp i'm assuming that's either for her or potentially for party members again the translation sometimes is a little hard to follow through on these uh merciless storm going to deal damage equal to 482 percent of attack to all enemies in a circular range 40 percent chance of stunning the target stun always effective uh you know it's one of those you know status effects that are great uh dark benediction cast a shield equal to 60.6 .6 of hp and applied defense boost to the target with the highest attack this is where things get a little weird uh because she's very focused on protecting your highest attack unit and that might be good potentially even in this guild raid scenario where these dragons are dealing a ton of damage uh and you know maybe in arena you want to protect your highest damage dealer at the time but i don't see a time where i ever really need this particularly with immunity and revive accessories going on in the meta i'm not sure this is going to be a must have uh, shroud of darkness applies damage immunity and attack speed boost to a target uh, where their hp is below 50 percent love this and then her passive is interesting where depending on where you place her in the party she gets a different boost so if she's in the front lines it's a boost to defense if she's in the mid or the back line she gets a dealt damage increase to the target with the highest attack positioned kind of in the mid and back lines if she's back there so really interesting not the best i don't think anybody's going to be you know crying about her i don't think she's going to kind of just change the world or the state of the game now the other updates that came through of course we have an update in our summon menu here if you go to the equipment shop we do now have a rate up equipment summon also lego plus accessories have been added into the pool i'm pretty sure they weren't in the pool before at least i haven't seen them before uh so keep that in mind i still think the equipment tickets are not a must chase i think you're obviously going to be prioritizing pet and hero summon tickets but 
you know, kind of let sleeping dogs lie. Now, if you're in the general shop, we also got an update to the common um, shop where you are able to buy the Lucky 77 chest. Now, this feature gives you a craftable way to obtain immortal accessories, and you're going to need to spend about $130 to guarantee an opportunity, uh, is kind of what my guild is talking about at getting and revive accessory. I wouldn't quote me on that, do your research first, uh, but this is available for 150 uh, rubies. I don't think it's worth it. I think it's a hard skip for me. Uh, in the guild shop, we also have honor coins now available and we have other things like the Lazadria pet who is pretty cool um, for guild coins added in here. Uh, we have a selected rate up ticket for 800 honor coins and we have gold for honor coins. So you're probably wondering, how do you get honor coins? Well, great question. You go to your crafting here uh, and you go to, it is miscellaneous, right? It's not showing up for me right now because I do not have, there it is, it's at the bottom. Uh, you need to have Crimson Essence. So the way you get Crimson Essence is you desynthesize uh, legendary tier gear uh, and you gain Crimson Essence. You can craft eight of these a week so you can get 800 honor coins per week. You can use these honor coins to either buy something or donate to your guild to increase EXP. So unfortunately, you know, I think a lot of players are going to save their 800 honor coins for the selected rate up ticket. And you know, if you're in my guild, I hope you would donate. I hope you would donate your honor coins to the guild to increase guild EXP because that's another big feature that's shown up. You'll see here now in the main guild menu that my guild is level two, which is awesome. Uh, so guilds now have levels and you are able to donate gold. You're able to donate honor coins and you can donate three times. Uh, I'm not sure if it's monthly or weekly. I'm imagining it's daily, or sorry, daily or weekly. I think it's probably daily because it says today's obtained rewards. Uh, so we got 300 guild XP. We got 480 guild coins. So not terrible. Uh, uh, you do also have access to guild mastery now. So as the guild levels up, you're going to get different mastery abilities that will affect you in different ways. Now, a lot of this is guild specific. So this is increases allies HP by 5% in guild raid, allies HP by 5% in guild war. But then there's some generic buffs like increased gold gain from competing in field exploration. The level 30 buff gives you increased all status effect accuracy. The level... 45 buff gives you increases chance of encountering field boss exploration boss by 10%. And the level 50 buff gives you increased skill level by one. So you are going to want to increase the level of your guild. You should be very incentivized to do that because there are very powerful things that are lying for you at the end of this. Again, if you're looking for a guild, come to my discord dig.gs slash discord uh you can find it in the description down below and uh we'll kind of work you in potentially if you are uh, a higher ranked player uh because we are definitely recruiting and we want active discord players uh to kind of grow and build finally guild raid has shown up here now guild raid I'm probably going to do a separate video on completely, uh, but right now you are going to be able to do a practice mode before you actually challenge. And it's pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, you can put a, basically you do very similar to guild battle. You have a composition for each one of these. The composition cannot overlap. So I cannot put, for example, Rachel in one party and Rachel in another party. I have to have separate formations with separate kind of setups for it. And, there's kind of certain units that are kind of mandatory right now. Uh, if you go into here, you'll see that, of course, the Thunder Dragon is going to use Shock. So I'm going to want to use, um, I believe it's Evan. Is it Evan? It is Evan. Uh, I'm going to want to have him because he has the Shock resistance in the party, right? If I'm going to the Silence Dragon, it's really important to use Valdur because he has Silence resistance. Uh, if I'm going to use the Fear Dragon, it's really important to have Theon because Theon has Fear resistance. And then you kind of experiment with different things. I found that sometimes, you know, choosing what pet you have and what pet ability you have helps. Uh, but once you get to like level three or four of the dragon, you're just gonna get stomped. Like I literally get stomped. Uh, I would say on my best runs, I've been getting about 1100 points. And that's probably a good, like if you're a player who's like, I wanna feel good about you know, guild raid, I think 1100 points is like a, like if I'm hitting that, you're probably fine if you're hitting like 700, right? Uh, so don't beat yourself up too much about that because there's nothing really you know nothing really for you to kind of beat yourself up about 
All right, everybody. I think that's it for the news that's kind of come out on the 19th. Hopefully this was really quick, easy, digestible for you guys. If you want me to do a separate guild raid video, I'm probably going to do one for my guild anyway. Uh, so maybe look forward to that. I know there are a couple people who have done um, from the Korean side who are you know, much better than me. I can't remember the YouTuber's name, but I've seen his Guild Raid video and he's got heroes I've never even heard of there. So um, I'm pretty sure he's probably in the forum somewhere. Uh, he's definitely on the Reddit. So make sure you go check him out. Uh, gosh, I'll put his name in the description once I find it. Uh, but yeah, guys, hope you guys all have a great rest of your day and I will catch you guys next time.